So good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the European Citizen Bank Big Season Recap. This event is designed to give you a fair summary of what happened until today as some kind of best of like opportunity to catch up for those who might have missed one or all of the episodes. Uh, it's not too late to join the fun, but also to see what happened a bit behind the curtain. And we'll have uh, a quick round table about that uh, later on. So please enjoy uh, this uh, type of uh, making of as well. Uh, we will also take a sneak peek at what's ahead for us. Again, more is to come and it's not too late to join the party. Speaking of, stay tuned until the end of this event. Go grab a drink and we will have a special after party event in about 45 minutes where everyone in the public, in the audience, will be able uh, to ask us questions and basically anything they want. Unlike the Eurovision, uh, we will also be able to see what happened in other countries as the debates were hosted in five different countries. So tonight will also be the opportunity to learn from each other and that's why we have so many uh, familiar faces on. We will learn from all five coordinators of the project. We will also hear from Stanislas, the director of Positive Money Europe at the initiative of this European citizen uh, bank. Um, and our special guest tonight is Peter Pratt, the former chief economist of the ECB uh, and also former economist of Fortis because he had to, before it has to become French. So it will be super insightful to pick his brain for a minute. We are also live on Twitch and on Zoom. I'm economist Michael Vincent, also president of Green Intervention, another NGO that supports the initiative, so don't hesitate to check us out. You might also guess from my pristine accent that I am French, but I could not possibly comment on that. I will be your host for the night, so please sit back, relax, and enjoy this special event through our Citizen Assembly of Central Banking and Monetary Policy. Without further ado, I will hand over the floor to uh, my guest tonight, and I'd like to uh, go speak first with uh, Gemma uh, from uh, Spain, uh, and maybe I think we also have some slides to be shared on that on the screen. Um, I'd like first then for each coordinator, and starting with Gemma, to just let us know where we stand in the process of this European citizen uh, bank uh, for each of the country, and we start with Spain. Uh, hi, Gemma. Uh, Gemma, am I pronouncing that right? Gemma. 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 All right. How are you doing? Uh, all right. Thank you. Yep. Um, yeah. Very exciting to be here today. Um, and in terms of the Spanish side of the project, we are kind of coming to the final, the final bit where we are approaching the assembly which is the culminating event for our process. And so we have had lots of webinars that have gone really well, that have very good attendance. We had a lot of participation on the platform. And um, yeah, we're now recruiting momentum and people to come to the assembly, which is gonna be at the end of next week. So yeah, counting down now. Perfect. And I'd like to, uh, of course, uh, remind people uh, that it's not too late to join the party, of course. And if you have missed any of the webinars, all are available on the Positive Money Europe YouTube channel. Be careful. It's Positive Money Europe to find all the webinars and not Positive Money, uh, which is uh, the um, sister organization or mother organization, I should even say, uh, based in the UK. Um, without further ado, let's move maybe to France with Sarah. Sarah, good evening. How are you doing? Hello, everyone. I'm great. Thanks. So, uh, with regard to France, where are we standing on this uh, European Citizen Bank project? So, on the French side, all of our webinars were held during the month of uh, April and May. So we had five webinars in total. We were supposed to have our citizens assembly last week um, on the 4th and 5th of, Ju of June, but actually we will handle our, we will organize the, the, the citizens assembly in October. We wanted to give uh, the possibility, the opportunity to the citizens to share their, their ideas and to learn more on monetary policy. So we decided to extend uh, the project a bit. All right, sounds uh, good. Um, 
let's maybe move uh, further south with Italy. We have uh, Alicia with us. Alicia, good evening. Hi, hello. Good evening. So I'm thinking that the situation is slightly different in Italy. So what's the, ta the status for, for Italian friends on the European Citizen uh, Assembly, um, European Citizen Bank, sorry. Uh, well, the webinars are still ongoing. Uh, so we are, we are holding our fifth webinar uh, next week. Uh, we, our guests are um, Leo Hoffman from the uh, from the Greens and uh, Fabio Castaldo uh, from the Five Self Movement. So both from the European Parliament. So we're very much looking forward uh, for it. And our citizens' assembly, as much as um, uh, like France, uh, it was postponed to October. Uh, well, because um, for, due to several reasons and. The most important re reason is that we want to give possibility to as many people as possible to to participate. So we want to talk about it during the during the summer, uh, during the upcoming months, so that the news gets shared and yeah, many people get to know about it. All right, thank you. And uh, I should have uh, specified something, by the way, when I said Sarah Zamoun for for France. Obviously, all of the uh, francophone speakers are, are welcome, and uh, I encourage also our, our dear Belgium friends to uh, join the party uh, as well. Obviously, um, but thank you very much, uh, Alessia, for uh, for the update. Um, we now move uh, to the Netherlands with Vicky. Vicky, are you online? Yes, thank you, Michael. Um, very happy to see everyone in, in one room this time talking about the project. Um, so in the Netherlands, we started a bit later. We've had three webinars so far. Um, we will have a fourth one next week on the Digital Euro. Um, so I invite you to, to sign up for that. Um, we also decided uh, to have our event in beginning of October, so the Citizen Assembly, for the same reasons as Italy and France. We want more people to go on the platform and to access uh, the amazing content that we produce and the recordings that we've made. And we also want to set up um, some meetings with citizens during the summer to, to talk about what, what, what they actually want from the European Central Bank. But uh, I will talk more about this later. Brilliant, Vicky. Thanks very much. And uh, you're doing very fine. So um, no need to uh, use the pen or the lighter as a <laughs> because it gives some background noise. But uh, um, may maybe a suggestion for Stan to offer a, a stress ball, which is less uh, loud uh, during webinars. Uh <laughs> but thank you very much, uh, Vicky, for, for the update. Uh, I will, I'm now uh, passing the floor to Mark, uh, who's coordinating the work for Germany. Uh, good evening, Mark. The floor is yours. Can you hear us? We cannot hear you yet, I think. Just a minute, no worries. We'll get there. Okay, uh, I hope you can hear me now. Yes, perfect. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm great. And, and so for Germany, we've done all our webinars. Uh, we had four webinars in total on, on the climate crisis, on the potential of a digital euro, on uh, what it means, what low interest rates mean for citizens. We had MPs come, we had um, members of the Economic Council for the government coming, and it was a great experience so far, and I'm really looking forward to the highlight of the whole project, which is the Citizen Assembly, and that will still happen uh, in June for, 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 for Germany and Austria. So it's, it's kind of the German-speaking assembly, and to be exact, it will happen on the 25th and the 26th of June, um, so that's the Friday evening and the Saturday uh, before lunchtime. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, people are signing up and we have a really professional and, and a skilled team of facilitators. And I think it's a unique chance to discuss the future of monetary policy. And I'm yeah, looking forward to it. And also, by the way, it's nice to see some familiar faces in, the, in, in that meeting right now. Um, but yeah, I think that's on my side. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, and uh, thanks to all of you guys for this first quick tour de table. We'll have to we'll have the, the, the time to discuss in more depth uh, the situation for each country uh, a bit later on. But uh, I'd like to take the opportunity that we have uh, um, that we have uh, Peter Pratt with us, the, the former uh, uh, chief economist of uh, the ECB, uh, to uh, pass 
along the floor to him. Peter, good evening and thanks for uh, having um, uh, accepted our invitation. It's the second one because we already, uh, the French speakers already had the chance to, um, to see you in one of the previous uh, webinars. Uh, you had the, the opportunity to work in this uh, big institution that is the, uh, the ECB. Uh, and uh, I wanted to ask you, Peter, uh, on top of, of course, uh, thanking you once again for, for taking part to that. Uh, one, one major dimension of this project, the citizen um, assembly, the, the, the idea of um, doing this European citizen bank is, of course, the democratization of the monetary policy, making it more accessible and letting uh, citizens to express an opinion on it. Uh, do you think that such um, more democratic ECB would be uh, desirable, but also can it make some of the tools more efficient? Can it even ease to reach the targets or to, to actually exercise the mandate? Well, well, that actually, it's a very good question you ask. Uh, let me first say that I, I accept your invitation with pleasure, but also because it's, uh, I think it's quite important the initiative you took. It's very well in line with uh, what Christine Lagarde wants to do in the strategy review. It's, uh, you know, basically she was saying we are used to talk, you know, to markets, mm -hmm. uh, but to the citizens, you know, we have some gaps there because it's quite a technical matter. And, uh, and also, when you talk to the general public, you know, I became a central banker more than 20 years ago, because before the ECB, I was 10 years, you know, central banker uh, in, the, in, in Belgium. And so I, I, I know the matter, and I know the difficulties to talk to the public. But it's true that when I went to the ECB uh, in Frankfurt, the distance between the institution and the public became even bigger, because when you are in your own country, you have many opportunities, you know, to talk, you know, you have mm -hmm. the local journalists and, uh, and you are very often invited to conferences and all that. So uh, I think the national central banks play a key role in the communication, but there is something missing in that communication. It's, you know, the central institution, the European institution. And that's what you try to fill, you know, with, with your initiative. It's quite complicated in terms of logistics. So I was quite, uh, you know, uh, well, positive, <laughs> positively <laughs> surprised. By, by what you succeeded to do in, in a relatively limited amount of time. But it's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. Will it make a difference? Will it make a difference? I think yes, you know, because, for example, I'll give you an example. Uh, when we talk about inflation uh, and inflation expectation, you know, what, you know, what do people think about the future of inflation? Traditionally, one looked at what markets think about future inflation. So you look at market prices about inflation because there is a market on future inflation and you can you can gamble on that you know you can trade on this and so we call it market derived inflation expectations now if you ask the public about perceptions of inflation you may get a very different uh, response to that i think the ecb now and the staff is working on that but the ecb now uh, has officially recognized that you should not only look at perceptions of inflation from the public, from the market's from the point of view, but also the public. That's just one example. There, there's one, one thing that is, I think, very important on that, that I want you to react on. You've mentioned Christine Lagarde uh, and, and the fact that there's a, a raising consciousness about the fact that the ECB may be talking too much or, or mostly to markets and less so uh, disseminating the information to the uh, broader public. Uh, I'm going to quote uh, the famous Nobel Prize uh, Paul Samuelson, that was uh, describing uh, Dr. Greenspan as a monkey, saying that when uh, Greenspan uh, uh, says that he should look at the bond market, uh, that he was reminded of a monkey who for the first time have seen a mirror. He sees an image of himself in the mirror and thinks that yes, by looking yes. at the reaction of the market, including its surprises, it's getting new information. I must confess, having been an investment banker working on trading floors on the rate markets, I've been the mirror often. And uh, if I may then continue on this joke, Peter, uh, allow me to ask you if sometimes at the ECB, did you actually feel like, like this monkey, uh, if you uh, pardon me the joke? Well, certainly not. Certainly not. I always say, you know, it's a two-way street. You know, markets are looking at, at the central bank for guidance. 
and the central bank then looks at the market. So it goes both ways. And sometimes, you know, it circles and you, you don't know where it stops, who, who is dominating who mm -hmm. at what point. So I take your point. I think it's a very important point. It, it is true that for the ECB uh, as a European institution, uh, it's quite complicated to talk to the public. Uh, so you have all this network of national central banks being designed to do that. Uh, but I, I fully agree with your initiative. And, and I think that's the objective of Christine Lagarde is to see how can you reach, you know, I think the ECB should be much more involved, you know, with communication of national central banks, because that's one way to do it. Because the communication of the Bundesbank, I guess, would be quite different from the communication of the Bank de France, Banca d'Italia, Bank of Spain. And so it's quite, quite good to have initiatives where, you know, the center, so the ECB is also present to these sort of initiatives. So I think that's a little bit what you're trying to do, you see. But I think uh, you should think carefully about the logistics of that. It's a huge enterprise you want to do. And so you have to, to clear set the milestones, you know. For example, I think uh, if you really want to achieve something, uh, it's, it's, it can only be, you know, to some extent in the long term. So you have to think about the younger people. I think, you know, history is extremely important to understand money, to understand abuse of money. You know, when the first time I became a central banker in Belgium, uh, my neighbor, you know, was a sort from the working class. He was saying to me, ah, can you print, a, can you print money for me uh, now that you're with the central bank? And that's what you're, you know. And so you have to be careful that people not misunderstand, you know, this easiness, you know, that just printing a piece of paper makes you richer. Uh, and what I think was good in your initiative, in the workshop, you know, that I saw a little bit your programs in different countries, uh, is that basically I found on your side uh, analytical uh, capabilities. I mean, that it's not, you know, just coming with funny ideas, but it's documented and it's based on re reading and research, I must say. So I think that's, that's very good. The second thing in your panels that you invited indeed, uh, maybe too many experts, I would say to some point, but you had people, you know, who understood the matter. So I think this risk when you deal with these sort of issues that you go into populism by saying, just print me a, you know, a few banknotes, you know, so I get, I get richer, you know. Uh, I think you, you try to manage that process. I think it's extremely important, you know, not to fall into this trap because history, as I said, you know, in one workshop is full, you know, of monetary mistakes, you know, where uh, there is an abuse of the printing press of the central bank. Uh, and I think it's very important to look at history and also, you know, to, to do the homework. On, on this, I, I wanted you to react because I think that's partially, uh, and that was also flagged, I remember, uh, during the, um, the leaving party for uh, your colleague Benoit Curé at the time, that um, a more direct communication good towards... Friend, Benoit. Yeah. No, but, but Benoit is a, <laughs> definitely a, a trustworthy uh, ECB colleague. And he was raising the point that uh, there might be a, some kind of doom loop between the ECB and the markets and that achieving yes. the target of inflation might be slightly easier if you were a bit more direct in your communication. I know there's a lot of debate uh, more direct to the citizens in the communication. That's arguable, but I guess the, the angle I wanted to make you react no, on is, well. is, is whether... Uh, there's a lot of debate about the independence of the ECB. Uh, but can it be questioned also vis-à-vis -vis, uh, the dependence of ECB and the markets? If you take the... Yes, sure. It's called, it's called financial dominance. It means, you know, that uh, the central bank at some point is very shy in doing something, you know, to, for example, to control inflation uh, or maybe the other way. Uh, because it's a, it, it would be afraid, you know, of creating a financial shock, you know, a crisis, because, you know, if markets go in one direction uh, and the central banks goes the other direction, uh, the markets may, you know, have taken too many risks and then the central bank, you know, shines away. Uh, it's a discussion you have. There are basically two issues of independence. <clears throat> one is vis-a-vis -vis the markets and the other is vis-a-vis -vis what we call public finance. Mm -hmm. We call it, you know, uh, you know, dominance from the state, you know. Uh, where the central bank, for example, would hesitate uh, to increase rates, for example, to tighten policy because of fearing to create a shock, you know, in public finances, you know, in some jurisdictions, for example. So these are the two things that the central banks have to, to manage in, in, in general. 
one answer to financial dominance. And I think it's a very good and fair question because, I mean, you mentioned Benoit. Uh, it's not only Benoit. It's true that, you know, uh, I think most governors will, 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 will think about this. The, the answer usually is to be sure that you have a very solid prudential framework on the bank, on the financial system, not only on the banking system. Mm -hmm. uh, authorities in general failed, as you know, and we had a global financial crisis and we still pay the price today by lack of supervision, especially of these global big institutions. And I think, uh, you know, we pay a big, all societies pay a big price for that. I think, you know, part of that has been fixed. But it's also true that some part of the financial risk moved outside of the banks to what we call non-bank financial institutions. Or the shadow and banking there are for recent episodes. Mm. And I think that's again, you know, when the central bank doesn't have enough information about leverage, you know, how, how much debt in the society, how fragile is the financial ecosystem, uh, then of course you get a problem, and the and 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 the, the, the central bank can de facto. Uh, be dominated by financial market to some extent. I don't think we are in that situation, but I would not say that it's black and white, that we are uh, not. Uh, we uh, I, 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 wish, I, I wish I could also question you maybe for another event on, on, on the potential comeback of that situation with the, the, the plan for securitization of NPLs and, and the market, oh, yeah. marketing of this to the shadow banking. But that's unfortunately a bit off topic for today. I, I'd like to uh, leave you with this last question, uh, Peter, and thanks again for, for having uh, participated today. Uh, as you said, this event is very much targeted towards uh, citizens and democratization of the monetary policy in general. We've done that with the webinars by letting people debate, learning about stuff. There's a lot of popularization also that is needed, uh, disambiguation as well. But not only this, the second part of this initiative will be about the citizen assembly and, and putting together some actual propositions, some proposal for the ECB. And that's uh, uh, quite lucky because the context is the strategic review. So I wanted to ask you what would you think the strategic review will achieve? And you, on a more personal level, what would you want the strategic review to, to achieve in terms of new tools or extension or reinterpretation of the mandate? No, that I cannot, uh, I cannot answer that in one minute or three minutes. Uh, that's a very important question. And as you know, uh, they are still debated, debating at the ECB. I think they, if you think about the uh, trust in the ECB of the population in general. Uh, I think I would start, you know, uh, the issue about the ECB and the people. I would start by trying to understand, you know, why has trust fallen? Uh, now it's recovering, but what, what are the explanations behind that? Uh, and for example, one of the uh, issues that came is uh, when we had this, you know, crisis in some countries, for example, uh, you know, you remember, with the Troika intervening in, in some countries where the ECB was part of that. Uh, there you can find a link because basically the central bank was going beyond, you know, its, its normal borders. And then people associate the central bank, you know, with, with many other functions and, that yeah. it doesn't mm -hmm. have. So that's, that's one of the things that I would say, certainly, uh, if you're led in the future to, go, to be involved, you know, in something related to a sovereign crisis, sovereign problem, you have to, you know, you have to think carefully about all this and not repeat, you know, what has been done. Another example, which I think is one of the most difficult challenge uh, for the future, uh, is to, you, you know, that in a monetary union, the central bank cannot design monetary policy in function of specific countries because it does it for the monetary union as a whole. Uh, we have seen with the PEP, you know, I mean, the PEP is jargon, but with the COVID crisis, that the central bank has tried, and I think successfully, <clears throat> to make uh, sure that financial conditions this would be easy in all jurisdictions. That means that the central bank would not only look at the average, but will also look at you know how is that policy transmitted in two different countries, in including the, the countries weaker. that were not benefiting from the key, from the quantitative yes. easing before that. Yes, no, but countries could benefit from the quantitative ease, but the markets may not accept that. Uh, so, you know, some countries like Italy uh, before, you know, at the beginning of the, uh, the COVID crisis, interest rates were increased. Mm -hmm. 
because I think we are experimenting Italy, some uh, quick no issues. And all the, Italy is going to suffer very much. So the ECB reacted to that. But they say we... I'm sorry uh, for the viewers. Peter is breaking up. Um, I don't know if it's only me, <laughs> but it's uh, definitely a problem for Twitch. Sorry about that. Uh, Peter, uh, you might not hear that directly, but thank you very much for your answers. I'm very sorry that <laughs> that we are uh, ending your interview on, on this, but thank you again for your uh, very uh, uh, interesting and insightful uh, answer. Uh, next in the program, I think, uh, last but not least, uh, I will give the floor to Stanislas uh, Jourdan, the director of um, Positive Money Europe, to say a few words about the initiative. So you, you are at the initiative of this, uh, Stan. So how do you feel about the journey so far? Uh, we've achieved a lot. Uh, but the, the point of this meeting is not necessarily to give ourselves a tap on the back, but we, we, we should be happy of what has been achieved. What, what, what's your feeling to that date and what are you looking forward for the next steps of this project? Thank you, Michael. Yeah, no, I feel really proud, first of all, of the people who have been involved in this uh, project. I think it's fair to say that I think when we first had the idea about the project was, I think, two years ago, exactly two years ago, almost. And um, I, I, I did not think, to be honest, that it would be such a big project. Uh, it was supposed to be a, a low key, uh, low key initiative. And and by the way, I want to pay gratitude for well three people who, who have made this project possible. One is Nicola, a former intern actually who has left now. The, he's doing a PhD on, on another topic, but uh, he actually uh, the reason we are doing this is because we had too many beers on, on an evening and we came up with the idea of, of trying to do this kind of event. And another person is Alessia who is with us. We did also quite a big of work during the summertime, uh, doing uh, yeah, heated summer and doing uh, doing the legwork for for submitting the, the funding application for for the European Commission, which as you know, uh, funding uh, uh, largely the, this project. Um, and and the third person I want to pay tribute and he's, he's gone by now. I think is, is Peter because as you as you could see just a moment ago, he's just the coolest uh, central banker in Europe. I think. Uh, I think we should have a prize for, for him at some point or do a contest for the coolest central banker, but there's no much competition so, for now. Um, just because the reason is um, I had the idea of the project, but what really motivated me to, to push it and to make it a real thing in, in our team, because it's not like we lack of work. So, you know, we, we did this, we started this project as on top of all the things we were already planning. And maybe that was a silly thing. But um, what motivated me to, to really you know, encourage Alessia and Nicola to, to work on this project was that basically uh, I was able to speak with, uh, with Peter and he was really encouraging us. I think Peter is the guy who, when the day he left the ECB, it, you know, every time a, a board member of the ECB leaves the ECB, they have a big mess where they invite all their friends and all the people, uh, all the most well-connected people in the Eurozone issues. And not and all are as dovish as uh, Peter, indeed. Huh? And not all are as dovish as Peter, so it's good. No. Uh, and anyway, so his, his big farewell conference, he says, um, you know, this story about uh, Europe is always built during crisis and you know, this kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy by pro-Europeans that we need crisis moments to, to build Europe. And he says, I don't like that. I think it's, it's tragic mm -hmm. that, that we as bureaucrats, as technocrats, as pro-European, we, we believe we need crisis. So that means we need pain. We need, we need people to suffer in order to build a better Europe. And he says that's a top-down approach, and, and it, it's it, it's foolish to think. Uh, there's a video somewhere with the exact statement, but it basically says the message that it's a bit foolish to think that it will always happen, and magically the people will follow what technocrats, uh, what the solutions of the technocrats that they, they come up during a crisis. And uh, and so I think it's a good wake-up call. And and so after I watched this uh, this conference, I, 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 I that motivated me to get in touch actually with Peter and. And he said, not only you have a good idea with your project, but please put uh, put my name on it and then say that I support the objective. So that I think uh, was a big, big boost uh, for, for the project. So I want to pay gratitude for him. And I think it shows also, it's not just Peter. I think it shows there's many people like Peter in the central banks, I think today that they want to open up. Mm -hmm. they, want to, they want to break a bit the Pandora box and they want to, to, yeah, to explain the way they work because that's their job, you know? 
Um, and and that, that, they do that on a daily life and they want people to understand. They don't all want this to be very obscure and obfuscated. And, 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 that's, and that's why I'd like to foster once again and encourage uh, our viewers or people that might see this video uh, uh, as a replay uh, to say that this is not the wrap-up event. This is very much a recap. Uh, and that uh, everyone is invited to go check out the previous videos because the Pandora box is open and what we're going to work on for some countries at the end of June, for some others in September or October, we're going to work on some citizen proposal, some solutions to reform the ECB, to offer new tools to uh, reinterpret the mandate. And, and that's very much what it is about. So, And uh, Stan, uh, on top of all that you said, I'd like to give a big heads up also to our coordinator, because obviously it's not just a Brussels event or just an event in one country. It's very much something happening in five different languages. And I think that's, that's also uh, the strength of, of this initiative is the fact that we are building here a coalition that is pan-European. Uh, and, and that's also what I really like about the project, if, uh, if you allow me to say. So we have, we have the, the, the main team here uh, and big up to Etienne as well that is, is not showing his face, but that uh, also uh, is a strong contributor. Without him, uh, we might not be here uh, tonight. Uh, as I was saying, this is not a wrap-up event, this is much of a recap to emphasize how much is not too late to join the party. We are inviting you to join the party now or tomorrow, it's not too late. And one proof also that it's not too late to join the party is coming from Italy. Uh, Alicia, maybe tell us more about your anecdote for the... Uh, for, for this European citizen uh, bank and the way it happened in Italy. Okay, um, so yeah, we were, the, we were the last to join the party, uh, literally. Um, so we, at, at the later stage of the project, we, um, we decided to, to include Italy as well. Uh, first, it was uh, another country, then Serena joined me, which is the other national coordinator. And so yeah, then we had two Italians, so it came naturally just saying, okay, so let's do it in, in Italy because we have enough uh, manpower, woman power, let's say. So yeah, it was a, and it was a great idea to do it um, because yeah, it, it's very nice to, I, I've always worked on the, you know, on the Euro bubble, but as of this year, I'm, I'm working on, you know, making my country a place where you can finally debate monetary policy and, and, uh, and central bank. So, uh, yeah, that's great. We can't hear you, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, good call. No, uh, I'm trying also to make sure that all viewers can see us talking, but also can see the highlights of where each country is uh, at the moment. So thank you very much, Alicia, uh, for, for this. Uh, wh while uh, you have the floor, uh, so the five events have already occurred in, in Italy. So now is the time for people to uh, either rewatch that and, and get up to speed, but also uh, to uh, prepare for this uh, citizen uh, assembly. Uh, what, what's the main highlight of, of what you of what you've been coordinated coordinating so far? Uh, what, what's your favorite moment or the thing that you remember the most? Uh, so we still have one webinar to go actually. Uh, oh, sorry, my bad. No worries, no worries at all. So easy to confuse. Uh, we have next webinar, last webinar next week. So we have many actually. We have many highlights. Um, the first one. Um, is related to the first webinar uh, as we managed to get a uh, famous youtuber on board um, whatsapp economy you can see you can see him here in the slides is um, a youtuber that handles uh, economics uh, monetary policy ecb so we had the opportunity to reach uh, a wider audience and this is a positive highlight and a negative one was when, well, uh, during last webinar, um, unfortunately, one of the speakers couldn't join mm -hmm. due to health reasons. So, I mean, of course, uh, more than justified. And so, yeah, we had to, we had to, you know, uh, manage a plan B and, uh, well, we managed. Of course, the um, Irene Monastorello, the professor who didn't manage to 
to be there eventually. I mean, it was a, it was a great absence in the sense that you know it was you could you could feel uh, her absence, but the other two speakers were were great and they um, and they managed to um, to cover the gap um, and to answer the the questions of the of the citizens. And we saw how in Italy the debate on uh, sustainable finance, sustainable green monetary policy, and so on is um, it's just starting right now. There are more and more people interested in it. So. Um, I, I did also flag the fact so that uh, so there's still one, uh, of course, a webinar to, to, to go, but all the previous webinar can be seen on uh, the uh, YouTube channel of Positive Money Europe. And uh, that was not necessarily such an easy work. All the videos are available, but uh, uh, we got scared at some point. Sarah, maybe you can tell us more about what happened. Yeah, yeah. it was um, webinar number one with Banque de France, so the National Central Bank of France. Um, I was uh, dealing with the technical uh, stuff and Stan was actually the host and the moderator with, Monsieur, with Mr. Garnier. And so as we did for all the webinars, we, were, we are registering our webinars so we can also uh, offer uh, the citizens to watch them afterwards. And um, at the end of the webinar, I go to the Zoom account um, of my colleague Vicky uh, to check if uh, the, the recording has been uh, made and if it's in the cloud and I don't see it. And then I started to stress a bit. I went to my, I checked in my computer because it was written in Zoom that it was registered on the local computer. It was not on my computer either. I asked Stan and it was not in his computer. I started really to get uh, a bit stressed, but uh, we had to wait until the day after in the morning for Vicky to confirm us that it was on her computer. So yeah, we panicked a bit, but in the end it was uh, registered and you can find it on YouTube. The, the good news is that indeed, uh, even if it was a bit stressful, everything is available. We have all video online. This one also will be on replay. Uh, and a special big up to the one who are uh, just uh, watching that on replay right now. In the future, we are in the past. Hello. Uh, having been involved on the French part as well myself, I must say, uh, that uh, I was very surprised also, positively surprised, obviously, uh, that uh, you know, we invite a lot of professors, a lot of economists. Uh, we talk about the monetary policy, so it can sound a bit uh, austere. Uh, might One might even say boring or a bit scholar. But the good news that is that, and, and I invite you guys to check out the previous videos, uh, it, it wasn't. Uh, it, it was, it was uh, actually very passionate. Uh, passionate, sometimes even a bit heated, I must say, uh, and uh, I encourage you also to uh, to look at some of the debates that were uh, very lively. Uh, I'm thinking in particular about the one I had the chance to, to host, the, the one about the uh, climate uh, uh, risk and the, the, the ECB, but uh, it's worth watching or binge watching the previous episodes because, uh, believe me, uh, there's a lot uh, of... Uh, uh, it, it's not boring. It's not like watching a lecture. Uh, quite the opposite, um, believe me. Uh, after the stress of uh, the, the, the videos, uh, I'm looking at uh, Vicky that may have experienced uh, another type of uh, trouble, uh, I would say, with the technical aspects of uh, organizing such, uh, uh, such big events, right? Yeah, well, yeah, the story I have is, uh, is a bit different from Sarah's. I actually didn't realize that she was so stressed about that video. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, for the third webinar, actually, I, I decided it was on uh, greening the European Central Bank. So I started to, read out to reach out to a lot of uh, sustainable uh, networks uh, on Facebook. And I think I joined so many groups that Facebook has officially blocked me from joining anymore. And I'm currently looking for a flat. And, and in Brussels, Facebook is one of the best uh, <laughs> means to do it. And I'm, I'm blocked from joining groups. So I'm currently arguing with Facebook, um, telling them that I was reaching out to networks for legitimate reasons and not, not advertising well. 
Um, but after, so you, you did uh, really much uh, get involved into promoting the events and stuff and make sure that they are successful. Uh, wh wh what's your favorite moment? What's your highlight on, on the journey so far for the Netherlands? Yeah, um, so it's it's a bit hard to say because we we're still kind of in the middle of it. Um, but I actually I already have two. But since more is coming, I'm sure there will be more highlights. Um, I think one of the highlights was definitely uh, the second webinar, which was on the role of the European Central Bank uh, during and after COVID, um, especially because, and it's something that Peter mentioned, we obviously invited a lot of experts. And when you invite a lot of experts, you can really end up in a situation where the conversation is very technical and where you're a bit speaking down to, to people who, who have less knowledge. Uh, but in the case of the second webinar, I found that Linda Van Ho, she's uh, an independent advisor on financial regulation, um, did a very good job of explaining the unconventional measures of the of the central bank uh, by actually using metaphors. Um, so she compared the unconventional measures of a very morbid kind of uh, metaphor, but using the example of, um, you know, treating patients in intensive care and that ultimately she's against these measures. And she 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 said that ultimately we have to get people out of the intensive care and focus on on really the mandate of the European Central Bank and not all these unconventional measures. And we have to the central banks are not the ones that are supposed to determine who will live or die. And, and mm -hmm. I, I really appreciated that also experts try to speak in a way that really uh, democratizes uh, the information that the monetary system thank you thank you very much uh, vicky uh, it's too bad that uh, unfortunately i don't speak the language because i would have loved to uh, uh, to rewatch that one to be frank um i'm looking at uh, Gemma, uh, Gemma right now since uh, for, for spain since we've also mentioned some of the technicalities and stuff i know you've done a lot of work also on the platform and about the website and that's also part of the point of this meeting today is to encourage you to go double check the platform uh, and and make your proposition so uh, Gemma, t tell us a bit more about uh, about the website and how how things work here um yeah well i when i joined the the project it was kind of not long before um before live date so i joined late and it was um basically we had just just about a month to make it all happen and to build it all and um i had um well i i got coming from a digital uh, project management coming into this was quite exciting because uh, for the first time i worked on the platform of decidim and Decidim, for those who don't know it, is an amazing, powerful, democratic tool. Um, and it's, that's been a huge learning curve for me, but it's been an amazing thing to see. And especially now, um, I'd say, I don't know if you're gonna ask me about highlights, but for me, it's a real highlight at this point in time to see it all so live and so having taken such an amazing shape online and seeing it all really happening in all the different countries. It's amazing to see that and the proposals coming through and the interaction between all the participants so um that's been amazing it's been amazing using the decidim platform and and being through this project very very intense because we had such a short time and we've been all kind of really chipping in as we go along and uh, but the fruit is is here now and it's amazing amazing to see it all there all live and kicking so yeah, that's um, platform-wise, that would be my hi my highlight. I, I'm also tempted to ask, uh, showing, uh, seeing a bit uh, the summary of what happened in Spain, uh, uh, how good your Spanish accent is, Stanislas. Uh, how was the, the first webinar in Spain uh, since you have uh, attended uh, some uh, webinars in several countries? Uh, did you feel uh, uh, that it was a bit different, the questions or the um, the the where we're maybe a bit a bit different or the, the, the topics, the, the, the point of focus uh, were a bit different between the countries? Yeah, this particular introduction remarks for the, for the Spanish webinar was a moment of, of regret for me, um, having committed and promised six months before that I would be able to, to do this introduction in my very old and poor and, and practiced uh, Spanish. So I I had a moment of regret, I have to say, <laughs> having uh, basically, I w yeah, let's say I was overconfident about my ability to, to regain the, the, 
the Spanish that so I long. used to be able to speak. It wasn't speak. that bad. It wasn't that bad. I was told so, bad. but I have to say I felt very bad on the moment. But I was also very proud that the, the, the Spanish uh, team got got all this event, and I I wanted to support them uh, by by doing that, even though I, I knew I would. I would not uh, like myself uh, doing it. I, I think I would agree with Gemma to say it was it was actually uh, very okay. But uh, in all cheekiness, I would actually invite the viewers to go check out by themselves because everything is available. So very much, if you need that to go check out the previous video, honestly, it's 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 there for you to watch. Uh, but thank you, thank you, Stan, for for this highlight. Uh, I'm looking at Mark for uh, Germany. Um, so. We all had to do things, you know, to, to, to make sure that uh, um, the events are, are also uh, uh, being lively. And of course, uh, we all feel strongly about it. So, I mean, I've invited myself also, my, my, my brother, to, uh, to attend some of those uh, uh, meetings. So tell, tell us more about how far you had to go uh, on your side. Uh. Well, I mean, you can frame it, I guess, in terms of necessity, but you can also frame it in terms of the people I wanted to reach out to. Of course. Given, given that uh, I think. I'm sorry, you're, you're back on mute, uh, Mark. Uh, I can demute yourself. I think. Yeah. Um, sorry. Good. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Sorry. Cool. Um, yeah, so I, I wanted to say that um, I think part of the project thinking was about w what are the people who haven't been kind of thinking about Monday policy as their day job, who have not concerned themselves with these topics. Um, and so I thought of my grandma and I just asked her if she's potentially interested. And um, yeah, so I think my fun anecdote here is that uh, I just asked her if she wants to join an interest about uh, a webinar about the impact of low interest rates uh, and the role of um, high uh, home, housing prices. And then I found out later that she was asking her friends if they also want to come along. And then there was a particular instance where she wanted to get a friend to come to the webinar. Uh, and that friend was hesitant and didn't really want to come. And then she responded by saying, hey, this is about the ECB and low interest rates. This concerns everybody. Why are you not coming? Um, and that was amazing. I mean, she's, she's 80 and um, I think these are exactly the, the reactions that I think we want to create with the project. People who have only kind of a loose connection to the ECB, having heard something in the newspaper about low interest rates, um, and then maybe having the feeling that this concerns them, um, but not having the outlet to talk about these uh, and to learn about these things in an accessible manner. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, that was a, <laughs> I think that made me firstly quite uh, happy and proud. But I think it's also. Um, an example for the interactions we wanted to create with this project. I, I've also alluded uh, earlier uh, at the fact that some, uh, if not most, of uh, the webinars were very lively uh, and, and interesting to that matter. I think you, you've witnessed something that was maybe even too lively at some point, right? I, I mean, I think so. There, there was a webinar about the digital year and um, I had three amazing speakers who is, is that really... Peter who couldn't stop or <laughs> no? I mean, maybe maybe many people have these, these characteristics if they're passionate about a topic, which is I think a good thing. Um, and so I think that happened uh, in in my webinar on the digital era as well, where the three speakers were really getting to the discussion, were debating um, a lot, and uh, they actually wanted to continue. Uh, and I found how to to cut them off um, with the one hour dedicated time slot for the webinar. Um, but yeah, I, th I think that's great, and uh, I think that the, what, what I would what I take away from that is um, also afterwards, as hearing actually reactions from participants who said that they they really got inspired as well by the by the debate within that webinar. That um, yeah, if you have a passion about a certain topic, even if it's such a dry topic as monetary policy, that's contagious, mm -hmm. um, uh, and people debating in a webinar spills over to people watching the webinar are also wanting to debate. Um, and so that has been another highlight for me. Uh, I think uh, we are uh, slowly moving towards the end of this uh, great uh, season recap. Uh, since you have the floor, Mark, can you maybe uh, just remind us what's the next step for Germany as far as, as, far as this project is concerned? Yeah, thanks. Um, so the next step and, and definitely the highlight is the Citizen Assembly, which is happening on the 25th and the 26th of June. Um, as so it's, it's, it's basically up. tomorrow, it's very soon. 
I mean, it, it, in terms of signing up, uh, I would encourage people to do rather early than later. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think there will be a link in the chat. And, and uh, if you haven't signed up yet, please do so. Um, it will be quite an experience. Brilliant. Um, who do I have next on the slides? Uh, I'm going to look at uh, Gemma. Uh, so uh, what, um, what's the next step for uh, Spain uh, to, to remind uh, to our audience uh, what to look for uh, in Spain? Um, same as Mark. We are currently on the very final stage. We are basically, we have a few days left to sign up to the assemblies. Mm -hmm. We have two assemblies actually in our case. Two assemblies of three hours on the Friday 18th in the evening and then three hours on Saturday uh, morning. So people can do both or can do just one and we make it easy so we can have different people coming and not only people who have a lot of time. And um, yeah, we're recruiting for that at the moment and also we're voting. Today I just sent out an email earlier about voting for proposals. So right now people are voting for the proposals that will be going to the assembly and that will, going to, will be going to the BC uh, ECB at the end. So a very, very exciting moment. Thank you, uh, Gemma. I'm looking at Sarah now for France. We had our five webinars. What to look uh, for next? So we will soon organize some citizen meetings uh, where the citizens will be able to share their, their ideas uh, their proposals and it won't look like uh, the webinars that we organized previously and in October uh, we will have our citizens assembly so whenever you want you can register and join us for the citizens assembly that will as I said happen in October so we have plenty of time to understand more about what the ECB is doing and how it impacts our daily life Thank you, uh, Sarah, and looking forward to it uh, myself. Uh, Vicky, uh, so as you said, there's still, uh, oh, on the 15th of June, uh, that's my birthday, but uh, there's something more important, which is the last webinar, or the, the fourth webinar, sorry. So what, what, what's next, uh, what, what are the next steps as far as the Netherlands are concerned? Yes, we, we still have quite a few steps. Um, so next week, uh, Tuesday, so on your birthday, we have indeed the, the webinar on the digital euro. Um, I think it's going to be a good one. We have quite a lot of people signed up, so it's not too late to sign up for that. Um, the same as France, during the summer, we're going to allow uh, citizens to take short meetings with us to basically have them tell us what they find important, depend on the different thematics we have on the platform. And then we actually want to use this input to do a final event in September where we talk about the issues that they found important and to give people a final chance to sign up to the Citizen Assembly, which will then take place in the beginning of October. Hmm. And this is something that you can already uh, sign up for on the platform. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Vicky. And last but not least, also we, we did Germany. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Alicia. Um, Last but not least, as I was saying, so where are we uh, in Italy when it comes to the European Citizen Bank? Yeah, we have our last webinar coming next week. So uh, I really uh, invite every, everyone who speaks Italian who, who can understand what's going on uh, to, um, yeah, to sign up for this uh, because the speakers are just great. Uh, so it would be extremely interesting to see what their opinion are on the accountability of the ECB. Uh, and after that, in October, at the same time as France and Netherlands, we have uh, the Citizen Assembly. So you can, even if it's in October, you can already sign up for that and choose whether you prefer the, the Friday session or the Saturday session. And don't forget that the fun continues also on the platform. So even if you cannot make it to the uh, assembly, there are still a lot of room to debate and make proposals on the platform itself. Uh, I've seen uh, your questions on the chat. Thank you very much. And sorry for the frustration, but we are just about to break for the after party where we're going to answer all of your questions. I will also take a two minute break to grab myself a beer for the second half of the event. Uh, but before doing so, I will leave the floor to Stanislas for a last word on, on what to look uh, uh, for uh, next and, uh, and, and give us a bit of a conclusion before we move on to an even more relaxed second part of the event where we're going to take the questions of the audience. Thank you. Yeah, well, basically, 
in a nutshell, the next step is that, you know, so far it's been about webinars with experts and people from institutions, central bankers, economists, academics, legal experts, and, and you know, sometimes NGOs as well, us. And basically the next step is it's all about you citizens now. It's all about normal people now debating this issue. Uh, you know, it was purposefully made like that, that, you know, first of all, like trying to understand how they those guys, you know, those technocrats and so how they understand their, their job and the central banking uh, uh, environment. And then now it's about us citizens interpreting and making our own opinions. So it's really, I think we wanted to symbolize this, this shift by having a different type of event today. Uh, and as, 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 um, as Sarah and Vicky have said, in some countries, we're going to develop even more interactive and then, you know, peer-to-peer -peer type of event, not just uh, uh, top down event in, in a way that even Peter, Peter was saying earlier, you invited too many experts in a way, but that, that was the case. So that, that was the, the, that was always planned like that. But now comes the real moment where it's all about citizens and and uh, about everyone here who is joining to to take their part in this project. So that's that's really what I'm looking for uh, personally. And uh, yeah, and on that note, we can we can move to the informal, I guess, uh, uh, moment of this event tonight. Perfect. So because it's informal, it's time for me to remove my jacket and uh, I will leave you for two minutes to grab a beer uh, and uh, and we'll get the opportunity to answer the questions of the public. Uh, I'm happy to answer as well, but I'm uh, mostly going to leave the floor to our coordinator this time around. So uh, the, the main part of my job here is done. Uh, I'd like to thank you again for having been with us for this first half of the event. The video will be, of course, available uh, on YouTube and on Twitch uh, for two weeks uh, and, and, and on YouTube forever. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks again and feel free to take the floor. Um, technically speaking, so how do we do this? Um, shall we keep the debate among us in English or do we want to break into... Uh, uh, yeah, there should be a debate popping up. Uh, if everyone is happy with English, we can have the debate all together. We are not that many, so it could be uh, manageable, or we can split in rooms uh, for, for various language. Uh, please vote no now, and uh, I'll be back in, in one minute. Um, so I will leave the floor to you guys. Thank you. Okay, so I guess this is Etienne speaking. Hello, everybody. I guess we can stay in the room. People have now the possibility to put their videos and to open their mic. So um, if you have questions, if you want to join the debate, please um, open your video, open your mic and, uh, and ask your question.
Okay, while we are waiting for the first question, I can give you one question that came from the Twitch channel. Thanks for an interesting event. I understood from what Mr. Peter Pratz mentioned at the start that this is just the beginning of including people. What are some great ideas to include people even more? What are examples of exciting co-creation initiatives in the pipeline? What are some ideas you will, you will try out? What are examples of technologies you will use to catapult participation to a new level? Um, I heard a Mark Grandma story. That's already one example. I leave you to whoever wants to answer this. Yeah. All right, perfect. That's quite a roadmap ahead. Uh, indeed, um, just maybe, uh, maybe if, if Frank is still around, maybe I should ask uh, if the question is more uh, for us as a coalition of NGO or if it is for the ECB, in the sense that uh, I think uh, the, the two questions actually are, are, are relevant. Uh, it is clear, and I will leave, of course, uh, Stan to, to comment even more, but such project is a step toward the right direction. It's also the first time that we are doing this, so sky is the limit. Uh, we can only improve from, from now. There's a lot of experimenting to be done, so we can only be uh, humble about it. When it comes to the ECB, it's clear that democratization is still a, a big issue and reaching out to citizens, it's not something that they do often. So it's also why uh, some central bankers have welcomed this initiative. Uh, that's also why we do welcome their uh, strategic review, which is an opportunity for citizens to raise their voices about uh, exactly this. So I think the roadmap for the ECB in general is quite, quite... Um, uh, um, there's still some room for improvement, I should say, on that, speaking on my personal uh, behalf. But uh, as far as the coalition of NGO is concerned, uh, that, that's very much the first time we are trying something like that. And I doubt it will be the last. Maybe, maybe I can say a few words. So of I course. think the ECB, they, they, are, they are making baby steps. In, in, in that sense, I think it's, it's not really uh, enough. Huh? Uh, let's not. Uh, I think Peter Pratt was very kind uh, towards, uh, towards Christine Lagarde today. Um, I think, in a way, it's what we want to do with this project: is to show that, with our own means, which are limited and so on, um, we can do a proof of concept and to make the point to prove that people, normal people, citizens, taken. Out, like a bit randomly like that, can actually debate this complex issue and can actually come up and we, we fully trust you that the, co the conclusion will, will, will be beautiful, will be meaningful, will be reasonable as well, but thought through. So I think it's, it's a bit the, 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 the goal for us is, you know, we don't pretend that this project will, will reveal the truth about what the ECB should do, but we pretend, we claim that we, we will show that it's possible that citizens coming together can come up with reasonable conclusions about about this issue, and um, and my deepest hope, uh, at least my personal hope, is that this will at least inspire, encourage, convince people within central banks to organize these type of things themselves in the future, and um, and I think this is possible. There's a general trend. Uh, we see a societal trend towards participative democracy. We've seen in, in uh, we've seen citizens assemblies working in Ireland, in France recently. There are many countries that are doing this more and more. Iceland as well did it. And every time it, every time people do that, every time we, we see that it works, uh, that citizens taken by random together in a, in a structured format can make, formulate uh, a rational, uh, rational proposal for, for society. And uh, so that's my, that's my personal wish. It will be a long way, a long journey, as Peter Pratt says, democracy takes time. Uh, this is also why we decided to postpone some of the countries uh, because it takes time. Uh, we cannot rush the democratic process. But uh, yeah, the journey is clear and then it will take the time it will take, but uh, at least we're all doing our best. Uh, I think we have a question from uh, Dr. Bernard who kindly raised the hand. So I think it's uh, good to, to leave him the floor. Uh, good evening, Bernard. Yeah, hello, good evening. I, I just was um, thinking I, I, I'm grateful that you do this um, to communicate with citizens about monetary policy. Um, I have not many people I know who, I'm can, who I can discuss with monetary problems. 
um, it's very it's a small group so I think you should use your platform to make these people acquainted with each other um, now I was here about an hour and I listened to you and it was very interesting but I think uh, zoom is 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 a technical um, thing which allows you to put groups it puts people into groups even randomly and it allows you to put into the chat for example well I'm interested in to get to know you and all these um, communication communicational things you could you could um, make more easy for the people who join you that they learn to learn of each other and try to discuss in uh, in, in little sessions where you actually discuss and you're not just consuming what you talk, but where people try to think about these um, monetary issues um, while discussing it in a small group. I, I think uh, Zoom has a lot of, hmm. of, of, of ways you can, you can encourage that. That was all. Thank, thank you. you, thank you very much for your very interesting question. I, I think indeed that uh, that's also partially what Doctor, uh, what what uh, Mr. Pratt say, said earlier about maybe too many experts at some point. It, it's the first time that we are doing such event. Uh, it is true that the balance so far was very much uh, was a bit more top down than bottom up. But I can reassure you that the project from this date onwards is meant to be more uh, bottom up. That's why we're going to have now those workshops and this citizen assembly. And I'm sure that's also the food for thoughts we're going to have for a potential new event uh, to make it a bit more balanced between the two phases, because I kind of agree with you. And uh, I will, of course, leave Mark uh, to give uh, uh, also his answer. But thank you for your question. Thanks. I just wanted to say that I think it's an excellent point and I'm happy that in the citizen, citizen Assembly we have many breakout groups planned where exactly these proposals or, or thoughts just about monetary policy in the future that people will have will be discussed and will be debated. And uh, that's one thing. And then the second thing I wanted to say is that while the Citizens Assembly is the highlight, we will keep using the platform and I will, I will keep kind of, I also personally want to to still utilize the platform after the assembly and, and integrate features by which people can connect. Because I think it is it, it is true what you said that monetary policy is a is a topic that is uh, not discussed by many. Um, uh, but at least we should do our best to um, give the people who do and who are interested the possibility to, ex to exchange and learn from each other. Um, so yeah, thanks for the point. Um, if it's definitely going to happen in the citizen assembly. and. Um, we will build on it further um, over the next months. Yeah, I just um, yeah. so I just want to build on that real quick. Um, I think that's a very good point. I, I, I the experience. I mean, when we first started this project, it was a big experiment to see how people would react to it and what would work and what wouldn't. And I think our experience overall has been that there needs to become more conversation between citizens. Um, so this is through the citizen assemblies. And like I mentioned, we also want to do over the summer some individual meetings where basically citizens can sign up to meet with us for half an hour and it can be in, in a group of maybe up to 10 people and we can discuss uh, what some of the concerns are citizens so we are building new things all the time to 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 make it better and more engaging and then um i just saw the message of the question of luciano maybe you want to ask it yourself but i definitely think that we could also share our knowledge of of this project with you um i understood that you're in argentina so um, we could definitely share all our knowledge and our experience of, of, of the project and it's very cool that it's made its way all the way to you. <laughs> so I, yeah. I don't know if you want to ask your question again. Um, uh, well, hello to everybody. Uh, sorry for my English. No, I was born in Argentina. Uh, well, I'm here just trying to learn from you because I would like to, to do the same here. No? Because here is worse the situation like in Europe, no? Um, so uh, about the platform, I think that is a good technology uh, for everybody, no? Uh, to allow people just to, to, to say their opinions. 
So I'm interested in that technology. Uh, I don't know, Gemma. Gemma, I, I wrote it here. Gemma. Hello, Gemma. I'm going to write you if you want to help me. Thanks. If not, doesn't matter. Um, well, about Europe and me, that's, well, I'm Italian as well. Uh, you is sanguine, but well, honestly, I'm, I was born in Argentina. I'm Argentinian as well. Uh, I'm Argentinian. So I don't want to, I, I write you uh, to, uh, to, to, how, how say, how, how, uh, to disturb no? your presentation and your work, just to listen and work. If you want to help me, would be better for the movement because Europe and Latin America, I think that more countries, uh, USA, uh, well, no, the whole world. So it's necessary for Europe as well. So that's all. And it's not me. Behind me, there are more people that studied a lot of more, that maybe for a small problem. Uh, well, that doesn't matter. Uh, that's all. That's my name, Luciano. Um, so I, I, I'm, yeah, it's like uh, the grandson of immigrants from Europe, no? My, my grandfather is Basque, uh, another from Spain, two from Spain, Italy, and what? That's all. Just talk. Don't want to talk more. Cheers. Thank you, Luciano. Good to meet you, and please do get in touch with me. Ah, okay. Thank you. But in nothing Catalan. No? <laughs> ah, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, they allow me to. Uh, to uh, to go to to the university uh, here in in, in Spain uh, in Spanish and in Catalan uh, and I understand a bit. Okay. That's well, all. if you speak Italian, too, uh, do you speak Italian as well? Uh, just a little. I forgot. Etimaticato. Uh, What's it? Total. Italiano, ma si parla e ho capito. No. Latin language are all the same, yeah, yeah. more or less. The Italian is. Uh, similar to Catalan. It's more yeah. similar huh, than yeah. Spanish. Well, that's all. I should, uh, I should let Manuel Valls know. Um, okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Baptiste, uh, you were uh, uh, raising your hands, uh, so yes. if you can speak up now. Uh, do you hear me? Perfectly well. Okay. Um, so, hello, Gemma. Uh, <laughs> so, in short, uh, I'm currently working at uh, Open Source Politics, so the, the company who is deploying uh, the CD. Um, my question was a good transition from the one that said uh, Luciano, when you're talking about uh, ECB, there is the word Europe in it. And uh, so as now there is like five or six countries concerned, what are your plans about uh, expanding it or maybe not? To me? No, no, to us, I guess. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh -huh. No, I mean, um, yeah, for f I, think, I, think, I, think, I think five countries is a matter of fact, uh, uh, working for an NGO myself and uh, trying to organize such work, I think is already quite an achievement because uh, building such network uh, on in an international basis is, is, is some work. So starting with five, I think is quite amazing. Not that I'm just saying that to give a tap on the back of uh, of Stan, but I, I do also think that uh, sky is the limit. So Stan, maybe if you want to to uh, corroborate uh, <laughs> that, uh. that's a bit of a tough one because uh, it, it takes a lot of resource huh, to to, yeah. uh, to deploy such a such a such a project and then to be fully transparent. So we basically got around one hundred one hundred thousand five uh, one hundred thousand. 50,000, uh, 150,000 euros for that project. Sorry. Um, so this is not a lot. This is really not a lot. Uh, it, sounds, it may sound for you some, but yeah, given all the time uh, for the staff that it takes and the, the, the cost of the platform, the, it's, it's really not a big budget. Um, just to give you an idea in France to organize the, the, the citizens assembly on climate change that happened recently, the Convention Citoyen pour le Climat, they had a 5 million euros budget. Uh, so, and yeah, with 5 million, you can do something proper. Uh, here, I think we're just, we're doing DIY stuff, you know, bricolage. Um, but yeah, I think, as I said before, I think it's not, well, obviously, if we had more money, you know, next year, we could start again, do a season two, maybe. 
but but that would be the the, the condition. Otherwise, I would really just love the fact that other organization organize these themselves or institutions do this themselves. We we might continue it as well, but but not in such a big format as we as we did it today. I also think think and that's something that we haven't said yet, but I think this project arrived at the time for for Posimony Europe where we're basically three years old. Uh, we're still quite young, or you know, as you can see, our team is pretty young. We're st all still a bit fresh, and and so far we've been Posimony Europe has been mainly working as a Brussels NGO, you know, uh, doing uh, advocacy just like any other any other NGO in town. We do lobbying, we meet with politicians, but we're also at the point where we want to have a bit of a transition where where organizations will also become more open uh, and more accessible, more doing more work at national level. Um, so I think that the value of this project is not just for, for, for you, for Europe, it's also for us as an organization to, to, to change our way of working. And, that, uh, and I can tell you that it, it's been changing a lot, the, the way we work with each other already within the team. So uh, yeah, maybe this is more for ourselves and that's not something that you, you see on your side, but this will change a lot how we work in the long run. So I, I can't promise more countries next year or something like that, but uh, I can promise that we will continue to we will continue to use this project as an experiment, as as a as an innovation, and as an inspiration for us to think better about how can we do something meaningful both for for you know at the political level, but also for people to do something that is really accessible and people can really embark themselves in our in our work as well. So it's not just a, a silo thing in Brussels, you know. So I can commit to you that we are going to try to keep that spirit uh, in, the, in the coming years and months. If, if I may give a counterpoint before giving the floor to, to, to Vicky, uh, is also that uh, not only Stan is right, but uh, we as NGO representative and as an NGO uh, network, we are, we are actually uh, filling a gap that the ECB itself could cover. And the ECB would have the means to organize such citizen assembly if it wanted to. It's not doing that. So I'm sure that if the ECB would actually do it, it would be much easier for them to host that in 19 countries with all the languages and stuff. And, and actually, because you, you took as an example the, the experience in France where they have 5 million to, to, to organize uh, some, something like that. And it was just for France. So. Uh, I mean, we, we, we are loving all part of it uh, and we are, we are taking a lot of pleasure in, in doing that and we want to do more in the coming years, definitely so. Uh, but we are only humbly uh, covering a gap that the ECB could actually easily fill itself. Um, so that's just the, 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 the counter angle I would offer on that. Uh, sorry, Vicky, uh, please, please take the floor. No, you, you already said part of what I was going to say, and then I would also say that maybe our biggest contribution is not to keep doing this in all Eurozone countries for the, specifically the reasons that Stan mentioned, the, the, the lack of manpower, um, but rather to, to, to share our knowledge with other people who would have the capacity, uh, even if it's locally or if it's Euro-wide. So I think that's our biggest strength. It's a, it's a first experiment, and, and we're very happy to share the knowledge and, and support in, in, in similar projects. Uh, with the knowledge that we've gained. So that could maybe be our biggest contribution for the future. Understood. I think Mark had a... Yeah, sorry, sorry Mark, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, only if there's no question from the audience, from, from people here, but I don't see anything. I just wanted to come back to why we're doing this. And I think it is true that there's a that there's a gap in in democratic legitimacy on monetary policy, and the ECB could fill that by itself. And, and we are going into that gap, uh, and we are doing this project to help uh, or, or to give people the chance to inform themselves about monetary policy and to articulate their voices, to articulate their positions, and uh, to get their positions heard. But I think even if the ECB would pick up these citizen assembly type projects and would do it themselves. I think there's value in us doing that continuously either way. I think there's value in civil society engaging with these topics uh, and providing a counterpoint to, to what the ECB maybe is saying and what the ECB is organizing. Um, I think, so I think there's an inherent value in, in, in civil society and, and just people more broadly engaging with monetary policy. I think that would always be part of democratizing monetary policy. Um, and so why why it might be a sign of success of that the ECB will pick up 
these deliberative projects in the future, um, I think there's reason enough for us to keep doing that and for more civil society organizations to keep doing that as well in the future. Uh, I haven't been looking at the chat so much, uh, so if someone wants to pick up a question from the chat, uh, please do, otherwise uh, uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to ask us uh, anything live. I can see something on, uh, on, the, on the Twitch chat, uh, if you allow me. From Frank, thanks Frank. Do you think that leaders should become even better at asking questions to the people instead of giving answers? Uh, that's a very good uh, question. Uh, I will I will start very uh, concisely by saying that I have the feeling somehow be doing a bit of politics myself that a lot of leaders are actually asking a lot of questions and commenting a lot on what's happening and not necessarily providing a lot of answers themselves, if I may say. Uh, so I I, I I I see your point and I agree, but I, I'm actually afraid that uh, somehow they don't necessarily ask so much for the opinion of people, but I'm not sure they are providing answers so much either. Uh, but that's that's a more personal view. I think there's truth in, in that comment. I, I, I like to say uh, asking a good question is already, uh, you know, uh, providing a good answer as well. And and I was actually thinking myself, I wanted to add uh, another question, just by the way, in the to, I would actually want to ask a question to people around. Right? Uh, just like Bern suggested, we should um, do more face-to-face uh, uh, -face or season-to-season um, uh, meetings. I think that's a great suggestion, and I would really love to hear more from you, from you uh, who are with us, who participants, everyone. What else would help you uh, to participate better in a project, to be better informed about the project? What would help you to speak to your friends or your relatives about this project? Um, because yeah, I, I think we can improve a lot, and, and for certain countries, we have the whole summer to 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 improve this. I don't want to put more work on my colleagues, but uh, no. But I'm, I'm seriously, I'm sure there are easy tricks that we can do better that would help you to speak about us. Because in a way, I mean, about the project, in a way, you, you are our best ambassadors. Huh? Uh, there's so much we can do with our own communication, but at some point, it's also about you know getting the 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 word to mouth, you know. Uh, so yeah, any ideas in the chat or anyone else can can speak. Take the floor now. Uh, if you have ideas about what would you, what what would that make your 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 participation e more easy? You're very welcome, Frank. Thank you. Uh, may I intervene or? Please do. Um, it's not an answer. It's more a, a question. Um, since you're uh, an NGO, but you're doing politics, why do you do not invest political like meetings or in events, not as uh, not taking uh, pro or cons in parties, like saying we support this party or not, but uh, like maybe feeding the debate inside parties? Or political parties, yes. I will, I will let Stan answer for um, um, for positive money. Again, um, no, it's it's a good question. It's about tactics, and then there's a book. Uh, but um, what's the name again? Um, uh, I forgot. But this book that says tactics is about doing the best with with what you have. <laughs> it's simple as that. <laughs> so when you you have to think of what resources you have and 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 uh, what's the best you can make out of those resources. I think, yeah, we haven't really like spent hours to think about your proposal to, to do more party politics, but uh, I feel like doing party politics, you need to have one person in each party <laughs> because it's all about, you know, befriending people and then, you know, creating relationships. So we're able to do that in the European Parliament, uh, but then doing that in every party in Europe, that, that sounds like uh, taking more resources than we have currently. But 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 uh, in the future, I think you know part of our role is to educate and mobilize so many people around, like supporters, so that other people would do that and would take inspiration from our ideas 
uh, you know, and then bring those ideas if they like. And then, you know, you can pick and choose. We have so many different ideas. It's not like we have one program and you have to, to take everything or nothing. Uh, you can pick and choose about the ideas that we talk about. We, you may like some of our proposals, some others not. Uh, but then you can do your own lobbying, if you like, in your own political party or among your... So I think that's how I see it. I think there's no one organization who can, you know, take, do all the work by itself to, to change the world. Basically, it has to be a, the work of an ecosystem uh, in a way. And we're just one entity in that, in that ecosystem. But yeah, that's just my opinion, by the way. It doesn't have to be the director saying everything. <laughs> I, I have a question both for you. Uh, what is uh, uh, what do you what do what do you want to achieve uh, with this project? I saw it only on the week ago, and it looks like for me very interesting. But uh, what's what's the idea uh, or the, what you wish to achieve? If, if you allow me to, to answer first. Uh, 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 I, 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 as uh, an activist in, in the uh, NGO world, what I want to achieve is vulgarization of the monetary policy because it's very technical. And even as an individual, I, I wrote books, I do videos. It's every time or most, most of the time about vulgarization of uh, topics that are about economics or finance. I want to give back what I've learned working in the, in the fake of it. Uh, and, and make it look like as simple as it is because you know you, are, you you will have bankers or central bankers using big words and trying to make it look a bit obscure by making it look, sound more <coughs> complex and I think part the first part of democracy is is, is to 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 teach to, to to popularize topics and make it uh, simple especially when it is simple uh, so uh, officially, that that's what I want to achieve, and I think uh, this project, among many others, uh, play a very good part into that. On a more personal basis, it's the after party. I can say it. Uh, I think that the monetary policy is uh, not is too dependent on markets and banks, private banks. I think uh, there's a real problem of independence here, and uh, uh, I, f I hope that such event and also the strategic review can achieve a more direct distribution of the uh, money that the DCB is printing instead of having it captured by the banker. But here, I'm only speaking on a personal uh, basis. Okay. Uh, uh, one, one, once more, uh, do you wish more influence uh, the people? educate uh, the ordinary people or do you wish more uh, to influence the e ECB uh, policy? Well, I, th I, th I think here uh, somehow we have a shot at both. Uh, I, I think one comes after the other. If you don't uh, educate a bit or popularize a bit those topics to people, uh, uh, then, then it's hard for them to emit uh, an opinion and that's also why in those webinars we are inviting often uh, uh, people from all sides, uh, people that are more orthodox, people that are more unorthodox. So we are he hearing views from all across the political uh, chessboard. And I think that's quite important because we don't want to influence people one way or another, even if I have a personal opinion that is more <laughs> leaning to the uh, left, I should say, uh, or, or uh, leaning to the people. Um, but having said that, the, 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 the prerequisite, I think, is to give the people the right weapon than to be, to be armed in answering those questions. And then the second step is indeed uh, to try to use and make the most of the strategic review, which is a unique opportunity that the ECB is offering to us to actually offer proposals and try to influence things. So for me, it's one, then the other. Thanks. But the stand, uh, Vicky, please answer. Um, I, sh I shouldn't be uh, <laughs> talking so much. No, I mean, you covered part of it. I mean, I think uh, part of the thinking of this, of this project is that at the end of this year, the ECB is going to review its strategy for the first time since 2003. And it's the first time that the bank also opened publicly opened itself up to the public. So it did uh, online consultations, it met with NGOs. And this project builds on that in the sense that we felt that the ECB didn't maybe go far enough. They didn't actually explain to people. They are trying to explain what they do. On their platform, they have more and more videos explaining things. 
but they could they could do it even more and that's kind of where our project came from saying okay actually we need to ex we need to give people the necessary knowledge before they can engage in the debates uh, and and i think that's what we're trying to do and all ahead of the end of this strategic review which is also why we have the timeline of the project ending in october because that's at the end of the year it's also when the strategy review ends so it, it ties in with with that deadline as well I just want to add a small bit, I mean, just to add it to, to what people have said already, um, and th think that picks up a bit on, on Bernd's point earlier, that I think this project and the platform specifically is also about connecting people who have an interest or who maybe who already have thought about uh, these topics and, and to provide a space for them. Because also, personally, having seen the interaction going on in the platform and the interaction in the webinars, I'm surprised by how many people are engaging with this topic in their own way. Um, and, and connecting them is, I think, something we can also do and want to do next to the stuff that Vicky and, and, and Michael already mentioned. I, th I think we are slowly uh, running towards the end uh, of the event or the time we have. We have been live for almost two hours now. Uh, so uh, I will, uh, of course, uh, not encourage you to, to stop asking questions right now. There's the platform, I shall remember you, uh, remind you that the platform is there for you to uh, participate, ask questions, provide answers. Uh, we are also, most of us, if not all, very active on Twitter and various other platforms and uh, very accessible to answer your questions, so please uh, see this as an invitation to reach out and ask questions. Uh, I'm very happy to carry on the dialogue. Um, but as I said already earlier, I've spoken a lot already, so I think it's time for me to stop there. So let me just once again uh, warmly thank you all uh, to the participants, to the audience, to the work that we've been collectively doing uh, that I think is one step towards the right direction. And uh, and encourage you to reach out, ask questions, and always be curious uh, um, about the monetary policy in particular, but about uh, about everything uh, in general. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for hosting us. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for joining Recording us. Recording stopped. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.